I hired a private investigator and the information he uncovered destroyed me. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. I have been married for almost 8 years. During the first couple of years, we had our ups and downs just like any couple. During our second year, I was prescribed Xanax for anxiety and it worked. Unfortunately I liked the feeling way too much and would take them from time to time. My wife didn't like this so I ultimately hid it from her when I did. It wasn't an all the time thing but I definitely did deceive her when taking them. I would take them when I was on a business trip. The only reason I bring this up is that I understand that I took advantage of my wife's trust. About three weeks after we found out we were pregnant with our first child we were about to leave the house and I needed to print something off my wife's computer. She was with me. As I opened her email I saw a message from Craigslist. It included naked pictures of her as well as some guy. I was in shock and I didn't know what to do. When she saw my face she asked what was wrong. When I turned the computer around, she started crying and I was yelling how could you do this. She said she was getting stomach pains. I immediately dropped everything and we went to the hospital. Thank God everything with the baby was fine. When we got home I was faced with the realization that I was stuck. I didn't want my baby to grow up with divorced parents. I stuck it out and tried not to look and see if there were any other bodies buried elsewhere. Fast forward to this April. My daughter is four and we have two-year-old twin boys. We are in the beginning of quarantine and my wife went down to South Carolina to take care of her after knee surgery. I had to stay home for work but she was going to be gone for a month. One day while paying our phone bill I noticed she downloaded some apps that are used for private messaging. Before she left I asked her if something was going on because she felt distant. She said I was crazy. A friend of mine is a pie and even though I was extremely embarrassed I asked for his help. Within one week of him looking through her computer, he found out that she actually had sex with one person that he found so far. And found that she was talking and sexting with men during our whole marriage. He said he didn't think I should keep digging unless I wanted to lose the bliss of being ignorant. I asked him to move forward. Days later we found three men she had sex with and when she would talk to people she would say horrible things about me. Not only about my personality but about my body, my penis, and sexual performance, something that she once said is the one thing that keeps us together after fights. At this point, he was still digging but I couldn't FaceTime my children and see her and fake being happy anymore. I asked her to call me when she put the kids to bed. Before I could make that call, my friend emailed me a list of kick groups she joined when she went down to South Carolina. These included meetup groups, random sex, a runner's group, and South Carolina singles. When she called me that night I was calm and only brought up the apps at first. She went on the defensive saying how she didn't do anything wrong. This set me off and I started telling her pieces of what I knew. I couldn't see her face but I felt her heart drop. I told her that was only part of the information and I would have the rest soon so I was giving her the opportunity to come clean about everything. She admitted to having sex with five guys and kissing another. She admitted to going on Craigslist and talking to guys. I read her some of the things she said about me and she was of course in tears. Most likely because she thought this was the end. During the last two years, she was very mean to me at times. She even punched me twice. I am a big guy, if I hit her I would kill her and I wasn't raised that way. So I just would try to block and leave. Now that this was out in the open, she said the reason she acted out and treated me poorly was that she didn't feel like she deserved me. I felt that this was an excuse but she said she could finally be the wife she wanted to be. Then the worst thing imaginable happened, my friend advised me that during the time of conception of my daughter, my world, my everything she slept with someone. I fell into a really dark place. My life felt pointless. As soon as my friend found the first infidelity he set me up with a lawyer. The lawyer asked if my daughter had any hair brushes that I could take hair from and send it with mine to look for a match. During the next two weeks while I waited to see if she was my daughter I kept getting files and files of emails and evidence of her speaking with men. In some of them, she would say she hated me and that she couldn't wait until I went on a work trip and I would come home to her and my daughter gone. She would say I have a disgusting body and I made her physically ill during sex. She said I never made her come which again is something I do every time no matter what. I would go down on her to make sure she got hers every time. She called me fat, ugly, dumb and a drug addict, because I took Xanax probably 30 times in 5 years, and the list goes on and on. 
She did this with every guy like it was a fetish to belittle me. She said that it made her feel less guilty if she made me out to be that way. I received the result of the test and it read that there wasn't an identifiable match. I dropped to the ground and laid there for hours. I'm ashamed to admit his but I wanted to kill myself. Luckily the lawyer called and said that all the letter meant was that the hair I pulled from the brush was unusable. She was set to come back to New York in two weeks and I really did not want her back. My lawyer wants me to drive down and pick up the kids, since I told a police officer friend of mine about when she punched me and had him take a report but not press any charges, I wanted to make sure it was on file somewhere in case she tried anything, the lawyer wanted me to officially press the charges. Tell the cops she ran away with the kids so I could show up with the sheriff from her parents town on an order to be extradited back to New York. As much as I hated her I wasn't going to put my kids in that position. They are the only things that are important. I had no one to talk to. I wouldn't tell my family or close friends because if we stayed together I didn't want them to hate her. She called me up and begged to let her come back and we don't have to be together but to let her prove to me how having a clear conscience would make our lives great. I didn't want her here but I work and I needed the kids home. I spoke with the lawyer who thought I was an absolute moron and I can't disagree. So we agreed that we would write an affidavit with all of the things she said and done and more importantly knowingly record her on the phone and have her sign. Most importantly the end said that I was bringing her home not to reconcile but for the well-being of our children. My lawyer said otherwise she could go to court in six months and because I brought her home it would be considered forgiveness and I would lose any custody advantage. She has been home for four months and it has been a tough road. When we first decided to fool around and give it a shot I couldn't accept her and she started crying the moment she knew I was not into it. My problem is I am an empathetic, maybe I put the pathetic and empathetic, person and I feel bad realizing even though it was brought on herself it is hard. Now she is at the point where she is fed up with me bringing up anything to do with it. She thinks that she can't be mad in the relationship because ultimately she did what she did. What I don't think she realizes is that I don't care about her feelings nearly as much as I used to. I know that I am not an angel but it is making me angrier that she is acting like six months is enough time to get over it. She says if I want to move forward I have to give it up. My response is I don't have to forget or let it go. I am still angry. I try to be normal but sometimes just looking at her lying in bed makes me angry. If she is going to give me a BJ the thought of her doing that to another man while I was working my ass off to buy us a house jumps in my mind and kills me. It follows you around. I'll be driving and three songs on three different stations will be playing songs of cheating. I'll pass an Ashley Madison ad or turn on the TV and be bombarded by infidelity. If it wasn't for my kids it would be over. Every friend I talk to with divorced parents have major issues about it and I don't want that for my kids. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.